Hi there, it's Mama Bear from Heart of the Matter Professional Organizing. And this week, Mama Bear is asking the question, where would you think to look? And so this is once again, a time when I want to remind you about a really key phrase that is really the foundation for being organized. If you're a regular listener, you've heard this one a few times, but I'm hoping that you get it stuck in your head because it's not a process that's once and done. It's something that happens over and over again. And the catchphrase is, everything needs a home. So when we're working with clients, one of the things that we do is we ask them questions like, okay, what else is, when we're helping them to create a home for something, we ask, what else is this light, light item like? So in other words, you know, how can we store and give this item a home that it's with other like items? So that's one of the questions we ask. We ask, where am I likely to use this item? So I'm going to give you some examples today of places around my house where I've given homes to things, and that's one that we'll address. So hold on, we'll get to that. How often will I use this item? That's another thing. How handy does it have to be? How close does it have to be to the action in order to, to be used regularly and easily accessible? That's a question we ask when we're assigning a home. How easy does it need to be to retrieve? So how easy does it have to be to get at it? Is it okay if you've got to go past a few things to get it because you don't use it that often? So that's one of the things that play into place. And one of the top questions to ask is, where would I think to look for it? That's the key. There's not necessarily a right or a wrong place to put something. It's in your head, where would I think to look for it? So I'm going to start out, as I said, we're going to move around my house a little bit today. But one of the things I'm going to start out with right now is something that I've got in my kitchen. And I call it, or we do around here, we call it the whatnot drawer. So this is kind of a mixture of things in this drawer. Check out the blog. I've got a photo of what I've got in this drawer. But this isn't the, the traditional junk drawer. Because I've got a drawer here too, that this is where my pens and markers and my little screwdriver set and my tape and my pads and all that sort of thing are in this drawer. So it's not that drawer. When we were setting up the kitchen, I specifically allowed this extra drawer. The prime reason at that point in time was because I know myself well enough to know that this is a horizontal surface. And Murray and I will lay stuff here. We'll leave stuff laying here. And it'll be stuff that we don't want to forget about, stuff that we need to keep front of mind. But I wanted to have a spot to tuck it away when I wanted to have my counters tidy. So that was why I designated this drawer. And in this house, it also has become the whatnot drawer. So it gives me the peace of mind to put things in here that I don't really know where to put them because I don't even know if I need to keep them or not. Like, for example, Sometimes you find stuff around the house, and I'm sure this has happened to you over the years too, and you think, what is that? Sure enough, if I throw that out, I'm gonna wish I had it next week. I remember that happened to me one time when the kids were little at our house in New Hamburg. I found this sort of brass knob thing, and I couldn't for the life of me think where that came from. Like I thought like, that looks significant, you know, and I left it laying on my windowsill for a while, and then I got rid of it, and lo and behold, afterwards, I discovered that it was actually the knob off the piano, you know, where you pull the, the um, cover out to go over the keyboard. It was that knob. The kids, as being little kids, had twisted it off, and it got into oblivion of life. I found it, didn't know what it was, and I didn't really have a safe spot to keep it until that unfolded. Now, we need to be careful about that, because I'm not saying that as you're going through your house, that this drawer should become stuffed and stay that way for years at a time. It's intended to be kind of a, an ongoing safe spot. So you've got some of that in it. I've got um, little things of hand lotion that I like to keep in my purse or we keep in the car. Again, it's close to going out the door, but I'm not really sure where to keep it. So I know that it's handy there. Uh, this is a, a pad off a prescription uh, pad from Shoppers Home Health when I need to get uh, my prescription compression stockings. Again, I like to have a few of these on hand, but I'm not really sure like where's the best place to keep them. For me, it's kind of in this, this drawer. It's not meant to hold a ton of things, but it is for things that really don't have a category or are very temporary or you're just holding on to because mm, I might need to refer to that and they don't really have a category or home somewhere else. I keep a couple of business cards here. There was this foot clinic that I heard about one time from a client, and I thought, that's a really good resource. And, you know, I guess I could put that in the contacts on my phone. You know, that certainly is a possibility. But I'm holding a few things like that here. Got uh, earphones, 
Again, we like to access those sometimes when Maria and I are working together here on the main floor. We've made a new rule since Papa Bear is retired that neither one of us listens to videos on our computer that are, are allowed unless we have the permission of the other person in the sense of if we're, if we're working on things and we want to keep our concentration. Obviously, if we're enjoying something together, that's one thing, but we want to keep these handy. So that's kind of what this whatnot drawer is. So we're going to just start now moving around the house. I'm going to just have a, a pause here on the video and we'll just move to a new section and take a look at something else where we're creating a home. Hi there, it's Mama Bear back again. So what I've done now is I've moved into the living room and we talked about where we're likely to use certain things and that'll help us to create a home for them. So I'm sitting on the couch in our living room. If I am going to do some nail care, if I'm going to use uh, hand lotion or nail polish, my file, that sort of thing, I tend to do it when I'm sitting on the couch at night. So the perfect logical spot to store those things is close to the point of use. For us, it's perfect because we have a drawer in our coffee table, so I can keep them close at hand. But if you don't, maybe you want to think about having them in a basket close by. What are the things that you could store in your coffee table? If you don't have drawers, but you maybe have a shelf underneath, have a basket or a two underneath there, and you can store some things as well. Now, in this shot on the, uh, on the video, you can also see over underneath the other couch. You're still going to see something blue on the floor over there. If I am going to be doing some stretches or some physio exercises on the main floor of the house, I would tend to be here in the living room. And because we have a wood floor, then I would want my yoga mat handy. And so what I decided to do to create a home for that yoga mat is I just fold it in half and I slide it under the couch. It's peeking out right now so that you can see it, but I, chart, I slide it back just far enough so that you can't see it when you, uh, when you are looking over at this angle. And it's perfect because it's handy, it's at the point of use. Okay, hold on, we're gonna take another move and see a few other things around the house. Hi there, now we've moved into the bathroom and I wanna show you a couple of things here. One of the things that I have done in our bathroom here, we have a little medicine cabinet and I've got some of these um, cute little containers and what I decided to do was I've got three of them lined up on my shelf here and it's my my makeup that I wear day to day so what I did is I've got one for face stuff when I need it in the morning I set it down and I use it I've got one for eye things and I've got one for cheek and lips so my lipstick and my blush and that sort of thing but what I wanted to talk about in this specific specific uh, spot here is okay my reading glasses we're talking about where would you think to look for things I sometimes wear contact lenses and right now with my glasses on this is good for distance and for close-up so I'm good to go but if I wear contacts then I also need reading glasses and I don't need them that often but I need to know where they are when I need them so if the question put to you about creating a home is where would you think to look for me, eyeglasses, eye stuff, I would think to look in my little eye bin. And so what I've done is I've got my reading glasses in here and I've got my couple extra pairs of contacts in here. Doesn't cause me any problem in the morning to get to the couple of things in the makeup line that I do need. So that's what I've chosen to do. I think about where would I think to look and that's where I've put it. So that's a, a couple of tips just here in the bathroom. I don't know if you can see this sign. This also makes me smile. This was something that Rhonda and I, uh, we were shopping together at Hobby Lobby in the States. We love to go there when we go and visit a past client that lives down there. And it says here, objects in the mirror are skinnier than they appear. True or not? I don't know, but it makes me smile. Hold on, we're going to move to one more spot. Okay, we're in the last spot that we're going to visit today. I'm sitting on the steps, which so this is our, our main floor hallway here, bathrooms over that direction, kitchen, living room out that way. This is the steps to upstairs, so the bedroom and the office upstairs. So I'm sitting here today, but I also have this basket here. It still allows ample space for safely walking up and down the stairs. But again, in a tiny house, Mama Bear needs to think about every opportunity and every spot that she has to store things and keep them close at hand for when they're needed, but also out of sight and also keep them sort of attractive looking as well. So I've got this basket here. It's had different things in it since we live here. But right now and for the last quite a while, what it's had in it is a couple of my large pots from the kitchen. 
So when Papa Bear and I cook, we do like to try to work smarter, not harder. So what we often do is try to double up on a recipe so that we have some extra to put in the freezer. So that means that I often reach for those pots. But when I say often, that doesn't mean daily. And I have very limited space in my kitchen for pots. We'll have a tour of the, that section of the kitchen one of these weeks too. But for right now, this is just talking about the things that I don't use that often. So I've got this spot here. They're easy to access when we need them, but also they're out of the way. And so again, thinking about giving everything a home, how easy do they have to be to access? Well, this is very easy to access, but yeah, I have to leave my kitchen, come out in the hall and get it. But I'm willing to do that for the once or twice a month when I, when I use them. So that works out good for us rather than putting, putting them downstairs in the basement because I also have a kitchen overflow down there. But I use these often enough that it makes it worthwhile to do it here. So that is our video today. And I'm asking the question, where would you think to look? Good question to keep in mind as you create homes for things around your house.